Hello everyone, this is Frank Andrews and this is the first podcast for OK Tulsa. Today is Sunday, October 4th, 2020. This is my first official day in downtown Tulsa, Oklahoma. I To give a recap of what occurred, I spent the vast majority of my day wandering downtown. It was it was a beautiful day, it was sunny. It was about 55, it said it was going to feel like 55, so I dressed for winter because I thought winter was coming. I put on long sleeve, I switched out eventually. Uh, pants, jacket, went out, walked around. I didn't think about that walking a couple mi- a few miles in the sun, it would feel a lot warmer, so that was a terrible idea. I was drenched in sweat. I probably smelled horrendous, worse than garlic hummus mixed with onion i love garlic fries by the way but it always makes your breath smell horrendous but it wards off vampires i actually had a co-worker who was a rapper slash demon hunter slash garlic farmer she was interesting very entertaining i love listening to her stories but anyway anyways back to my story I'm wandering the streets. I'm filming my first vlog and video that I have to edit. I took a lot of photos, snap, snap. Not the most professional, but they will do. Like I said, the streets were empty, which was nice. There wasn't very many individuals out. There were barely any cars. So I got to wander all of downtown, explore all these areas. I even walked into places that I wasn't even planning on going, like John Hope. John, I want to say John Franklin Hope Reconciliation Park, John Hope Franklin Reconciliation Park, something along the lines. I have to look it up again. I apologize, but it was nice. There was a family there. I did not want to do to disturb them or get too close. They were enjoying it, but it was tranquil. The gr- the grounds were kept very nicely. The statues were very, very cool. I found this other place as well. I think it was a Williams Green and there's some statues there and a globe that is not to scale. It was cool. One of the things that I did see that was quite... mm, It just was not breathtaking. It seemed it was a letdown and that was the Tulsa Performing Arts Center. If you're familiar with the building, you will understand what I am saying. For a place that has, that's a performing arts center, and you have all these artists, you have murals all over, and you have your building. You're supposed to be the performing arts building. The building is plain, it is boring. I saw it and I thought, there's no way this is it. Turns out it is. They have one statue up front and it looks like it's supposed to be a modern sculpture because it looks like a staircase made of aluminum, possibly steel. But that was about it. The rest of the building was just an off-white color that looked like a concrete building. So I just don't understand why not have artists, local artists, do some sort of competition or whatever it may be and they could paint murals and you can, you can get really creative with it. It's supposed to be the epicenter of arts. But yeah, it was nice. Uh, downtown Tulsa, that is. I walked all the different districts and enjoyed it. I had lunch back in my apartment and whatnot and refreshed change because I was sweating. Plus, I had an Amazon delivery. The man was a homie, though. He called me to tell me that he was here and didn't know how to come into my building. And I said, I am very far away. I will not be able to do, or I will not be able to make it back in time. So I... Uh, told him he could to not he didn't want to leave it I said don't leave it because I didn't want those things to get stolen but there's a bunch of construction near my building that I'm at right now at the Airbnb so I thought he could hide it I said do you see concrete tubes he said yes I said hide it there he said what I said hide it there he said no I'm not doing that I said why and he said I'll just come back later and I was like okay that's fine he said, I'll come back in an hour. Uh, is that enough time? I said, yeah. And I was like, thank you. I appreciate it. I did appreciate it. That was really nice of him. 
He was really cool. He was really friendly. Shout out to him, the Amazon delivery driver. He had a bunch of tattoos um, that were really cool. Except one, he just had all black arm. It, he said it took 11 hours. That was pretty intense. I wonder if it's just connected to something else. But it was just full on. He did black arm. He was cool though. Then I also... What else did I do? Oh yeah. So I had this idea because I was... I did not FaceTime my mother and my nephew when I came back to eat lunch, which was nice to see them. And then I wanted to eat a filling dinner because breakfast and lunch I ate like a bird. I don't have too much food. I am trying to... I know that it looks like I have the body of Jack Skellington or a body that is living through a famine. and. It may seem, well, right now while I'm eating, it seems like that is the look I'm going for. But previous to my arrival, I ate at least 3,000 calories. Maybe maybe that's a little exaggeration, but for sure more than 2,000. But here, I wanted to lower my food intake. You may ask why. It's primarily just to kind of save money. And I only have a microwave and a toaster oven, so I can't do too much. I have to get pretty creative. And I'm not a creative chef. I used to be a chop champion. Back in the day, when I lived in Orange County, me and my roommates, we would all play chopped with our leftover groceries. It was really, really enjoyable and amusing. And we got very talented at cooking. What we would do was we would smoke weed. This is my early 20s. We would smoke weed. We would then look at all our leftovers at the end of the week. We would have friends come over or at the time, few, some of them had girlfriends. They would come and they would be judges, special judges, guest judges. We would cook for them, they taste it, and it was fun. I was a three-time champion, but now I do not have that ability. Prior to this, all I ate was fruit parfaits and scrambled eggs with veggies. I love eggs and I, am not be I have not eaten any in since I've been here, and that is a streak that I am not happy to break. I would eat at least three eggs a day, upwards of nine, for the past 10 years. So anyways, back to my story. I wanted to get a nice dinner, something that would fill me up. So I started looking on line, on Yelp, on Google, every place that has Rest, a restaurant directory for nearby restaurants. Turns out everything is closed, which I don't mind in regards to, I think employees should get a day off, even if they're not religious, to have Sundays off, it's quite nice. I just wasn't used to it, so I wasn't expecting it, otherwise I would have bought something prior. So now I know. If you're coming to town, Sundays are very hard to find anything to eat, so have something from the grocery shop. Use that day to cook or have leftovers in advance. I, I called a place though that seemed, it was called Duet. It's not a singing place, but they have music. If they want to do duet, I'm willing to do so. I'm not a great singer, but I'm willing to sing. I used to think I was a great singer. It was, this is actually quite a tragic story. Allow me to di diverge, to divert and begin to tell you this tale. When I was a child, I thought I was the greatest singer ever. I would always sing. I was I thought I was in a Disney musical when I was just singing constantly, breaking on musical numbers. My little brother lived with me. He roomed with me practically my whole life. And one day he had enough. He yelled at me and said that I am the worst singer he ever heard. And I was so delusional and so confident in myself that I literally thought that he was just saying that because he was jealous. Turns out he was right. So anyways, it took years because prior to this, there was no recording devices. This is the 90s and early 2000s. It's recording devices are very expensive. No one has cell phones. So I just kept pretending I was really great. Plus people lied to me. I once, I remember singing an R&B song to a girl in eighth grade and she told me I was a great singer and I got really into it. Eyes closed and everything. Sang some 90s R&B song, Joe. If you know who that artist is. 
he has a lot of great songs, great love songs. Um, I had no idea what I was singing at the time. The quite inappropriate for a boy at my age singing at 12, 13 to a girl, but she loved it. So anyways, I was delusional about that. I got a video camera and I finally set it up. I had it not facing me. I started singing a song and I was excited to hear myself sing because I was like, this is going to be amazing. It's going to sound even better than Whitney Houston. I played it and I was appalled. I was utterly horrified. The reason, because it sounded terrible. It made me want to Van Gogh myself, chop my ear off. Quite possibly call Mike Tyson, put top of tea on my ear and have him bite it off because it was terrible. I, I still did, thought that wasn't me. I thought perhaps a gust of wind came in and it, play, it made the sound and what I'm hearing or maybe there's a ghost in my room that's singing. So this time I turned the camera around to face me because I was like, my eyes won't deceive me. So if this is really me singing, then I will know I'm not meant to sing. I then sang again. And to my utter dismay, I realized I was a terrible singer and that was the end of my singing career. Thankfully, I didn't go on to be one of those terrible contestants that people make fun of on American Idol when that was a thing, when they would have, you know, you, they still have YouTube compilations of the worst singers. I would have been on there. Simon would have kicked me out. He would have said probably some rude things to me. But at least I would have my 15 minutes of fame. So that was the end of my singing career. So I don't know why I diverted to that story, to be honest. I quite lost my place. Um, yeah, I don't remember what I was saying. Oh, duet, yes. So I went to, I called Duet because on mine, on all the directories, it said it was open on their website, their website. It said Sundays from like 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. or 8 p.m., something along those lines. And it was only 3 p.m. So I said, great, this is the spot. It had this pot pie, a duck pot pie that I was really intrigued and compelled by. I couldn't wait to try it because I used to be a fan of chicken pot pies huge fan of them actually I used to have them all the time when I was a child during cafeteria food days you, if anyone used to eat at a public elementary school and had the plastic film food that would come frozen they would just throw it in the microwave or whatever they had and never actually saw in the back of the cafeteria but these things were gross they I don't even know what kind of bottom it had it was some sort of like paper it was like the paper plates kind of um texture material and then on top was like a film like cling wrap and it would always get like condensation and you'd peel it back and the steam would come out and that was like all the food but they had chicken pot pies and that was my favorite as a kid because as a child you have a terrible palate i used to like fast food until i realized it was garbage but then i loved it and then i loved chicken pot pies but what made me stop eating them, two things, but it was the same event. So this was sixth grade. I was sitting down at the table, table, and at this time, I had a crush on this girl. Her name was Ariel. She was like the Little Mermaid. She wasn't a ginger girl though, but her name was Ariel. I was hoping to be her prince, but after this event, that did not happen. And I'll tell you why. So we sit down. She and her friends sit down. And I, you know, when the universe kind of comes together. And I said, oh, wow, this is my shot. This is my chance. So we're talking. Everyone's kind of having a good time. We're all cracking jokes. You know, feeling the rapport. I'm looking at her to see if she's laughing at my jokes. Sometimes she is. Sometimes she isn't. Um, I'm enjoying my food. I'm not really paying attention. Eating my food. A friend tells a joke and whatnot. He's talking. I take a bite of the chicken pot pie and the nastiest combination occurred in my mouth. And what that is, is when you get something that you microwave that's frozen and part of it is still frozen and the other is hot. If you ever had that combination, you know exactly what I'm talking about and you know the horror that I felt when I tasted it. 
I started to choke on some pie crust from the chicken pot pie and some frozen peas and that rubbery chicken. And my friend told a joke and so I laughed at the same time and it got lodged in the back of my throat. My friend hit me in the back, which is something you're not supposed to do. But back then, that's what everyone always does, hit somebody in the back. It worked. But I'm, I think I just coughed it up and I spit it out. Ariel was sitting exactly across from me. And that frozen, now kind of mushed up warm saliva covered pea mixed with pea as in peas, not piss mixed with the pie crust and the rubbery chicken, hit her square in the face. And she was pissed. I tried to apologize. Her friends grabbed her. She went to the restroom, embarrassed. I was embarrassed too. My friends were laughing hysterically like hyenas. I tried to apologize. I gave her, I wrote her a really romantic note for Valentine's Day, saying that she was my moon on the darkest nights did not work. And that was the end of our never happening relationship. And that was my chance. So since then I cursed chicken pot pies. I refused to ever eat them again. I cursed them to hell so that I was hoping that the devil and his demons would choke on them, just like I choked on them. But I saw the duck pot pie and I thought, this, this is interesting, this is compelling, this is intriguing. I wanted to order it. I call the customer service answers. Hey, how are you doing? Well, this is duet. What do you, what can I get you? What can I help you with? And I said, Oh, I want to order for takeout. She said, actually we're closed. I said, okay. Your website says you're open. No, no, no. Sunday we just do brunch. I said, okay. I was disappointed and quite annoyed because one of my pet peeves is when websites are wrong and they don't have, or when the website's wrong and they do not correspond to what's actually happening. I love an updated website. I hate when websites are outdated, especially things like that. I once called Verizon when I got my new phone because it wasn't working like it's supposed to. And the paper that the guy gave me when I got my new phone had numbers already on it. I don't blame the customer service representative because he just works there. He is giving a paper that they gave him, his bosses. None of the numbers work. They were all outdated. They're the numbers that I am supposed to call to activate my new phone. None of them worked. I was frustrated. I then emailed all the store managers. None of them replied. Even days later, none of them replied. And then I thought, okay, I really wanted my phone to work. So I called, I went on verizonwireless.com, typed away, found the customer service number, called it. It was out of service, Verizon Wireless. Verizon has the worst customer service. It's so bad that they don't even have a customer service. It's non-existent, literally. And I wasn't, I laughed at this point and I thought it was absurd. But thankfully I eventually just switched out a SIM card and it worked. So it was a lot easier than expected. My sister's boyfriend was trying to tell me to change out the SIM card, but he's like a tech guy. So I thought it was going to be extremely complicated because I am tech illiterate. Turns out it was very easy. I felt bad afterwards because I thought it was going to be complicated and rushed him off the phone because I was like, I do not want to do this and mess with my phone more. But anyways, yeah, so I was annoyed by Duet, but I still want to go back and try it, that pot, duck pot pie. Perhaps in person I can sit down. They are supposed to have live music. I'm not sure if that is going on during COVID time. Let's hope it is. I love live music. I think there is one coming up soon on Friday. I'll check it out at the, on the green by the pack. That's Performing Arts Center. I, don't, I didn't see a green though, I saw a small green, so I don't know if that's where it's happening. Perhaps. I guess we will see. So I'm kind of lost at this point, but I'm thinking I'm just going to wander the street downtown. Something has to be open. Turns out nothing's open. I'm wandering, I'm wandering. I am starting to feel like the Israelites in the Bible when they're wandering in the desert after Egypt. It's starting to feel like their slavery wasn't too bad, they start to complain, right? Um, I start to think perhaps my celery and carrots aren't that bad, I may have to go back to the apartment and just munch away at that. And hopefully that will fill me up, but no. I stop at the Williams Green, sit on the bench, 
slightly defeated, but still not giving up. I went back on my phone. I went on Google Maps and I lo tried to locate anything that was open. Thankfully, I found a place called Cicero, Taste of the Caribbean. And I thought, hmm, something's open. And Tasting the Caribbean sounded, once again, enthralling. So I called, fingers crossed, hoping that it was not lying to me like Duet did and that they were actually open. And I was worried because it took two transfers before I finally got to speak to somebody about placing the takeout order. I called, they answer. I said, I want to place takeout. They said, do you mind if I put you on hold? I said, no. Listen to some music because they had music playing while I was on hold. It's pretty catchy. Then I get transferred and a man answers and says, hey, this is Cicero's, how can I help you? I said, I'd like to place takeout. He said, hold on, I have to transfer you. I said, okay. I was quite confused at this point because the previous lady said she was transferring me over to place to take out. Then they transfer me again and finally another man answers and says, hey, this is Cicero's Taste of the Caribbean. How can I help you? I said, I'd like to place a takeout order. Is that possible? Are you guys open? He said, we are. And at this point I forgot what I was supposed to order because I checked out the menu and I completely forgot what my order was. So. I am not sure if they had multiple burgers, but I said, I saw a burger, I want that. Primarily because I didn't want to spend too much money and that was one of the cheaper options. They had entrees up to $30. I think they had oxtail and I wanted that, but I saw it at 20, it was $30 for an entree and I thought, hmm, risky. So I'd go a burger, I wanted a side, I went soup because I've been loving that combination. I have a food vlog about it. Uh, I've vlogged about it and I think I'm going to vlog about it. So you can read more in detail about it, that experience. But anyways, I was thankful that something was open. So I was like, that old cliche, beggars can't be choosers. I wasn't begging, but I didn't have a choice. That was the only restaurant I could find that was open. So I went, I saw a parrot in the distance. I actually walked through uh, the center of the universe, that attraction, but I didn't stay. There was a family there and they were enjoying it and so I did not want to rudely interrupt but I got to check it out. Um, I gotta say uh, it may be even more of a letdown than the Tulsa Performing Arts Center. If you are visiting and you visit just strictly for that, um, I am going to question your life choices. It's something that's probably cool to do because I hear you can hear yourself from all different angles or whatever it may be. If you're with someone else and you guys are already in town and you just happen to walk by, you want to take some photos, there's like a big statue thing, then that's fine. But if you're going sp specifically for that attraction, you are making terrible life choices. And you should definitely start to reevaluate and do some deep introspection, ruminate on your life. I bet the individuals who are getting trashed on weekdays by themselves are the same individuals that go because that could be a, a drunken choice. So anyways, I get to the spot, I walk up, uh, it's quite empty inside. Uh, the woman who was at the bar is very kind. She gets me my order, whatnot, everything is fine. And I had this plan when I was heading out I said, I'm going to eat my dinner. It was a beautiful day and I just really wanted to stay outside and not be crammed at the Airbnb. So I said, okay, this is my plan. I am going to go to the Guthrie Green because I saw that earlier and I really liked the area. It was quite happening there. And I saw some tables where I can sit down, do a food vlog, eat my, eat my dinner slash lunch because it was around four o'clock at this point. And I brought my book and a notebook, take some notes. I thought I was just going to relax, enjoy the fresh air. Um, there's some individuals out there, so I thought, yeah, it'd be nice. This would be a good first dinner outside in downtown Tulsa. I get there, there's something going on out on the stage where I'm trying to sit. I don't want to interrupt them, so I move to the side where no one's at at this moment. It's empty. I said, perfect, I can film a vlog here, not bother anyone. 
It's sort of by the closed bathrooms because of COVID, it's closed. But I'm by myself. I start filming, then all of a sudden I'm starting to hear a bunch of noise. I started to see some sketchy characters come, and one of them comes from behind and he's scratching something very. Uh, he's doing it at a rapid pace and quite ferociously. And first I thought maybe he had, you know, numerous scratchers that he was very excited to scratch away to see if he won the lottery. But it wasn't a scratch. I don't know what he was scratching, but he was scratching very, very viciously. And so I look and he's behind me. So I turn around and say, hey, what's up? How, how are you? And he says, hey, what's up? Then he walks away. I said, okay, I don't know what he's doing. He maybe just had to toss something, whatever. I get back. I am trying to, I'm eat, finishing my meal. It's uh, sort of reading and finish my, finishing my meal because I finished my blog because I didn't want to sit there and eat my food on camera for anyone too much because I think that just is going to be kind of gross to be eating inside the microphone. And then I start hearing this odd noise and for those not watching the YouTube video of this and are just listening to the podcast, what this man did was he put both of his, his pointer finger and middle finger, both hands to his temples, like he was using mental powers like telekinesis and he was making this sound doing that over and over and over again and I thought what the hell is this guy doing he had headphones in I don't know if they were connected to anything so I don't know if he was trying to tune in to the radio or match that frequency I don't know what he was doing or maybe he was really um, a superhero and did have telekinesis powers but he was doing that he was going up to if anyone's familiar with the Guthrie Green, that stage area where there is like a balcony and you can lean over, he was going to all the spots leaning over doing that. And there was security walking around, but I think he didn't want to deal with it. I was like, dude, he wasn't even looking at him. I'm like, how is this? This guy is either a superhero or clearly insane. Because he just kept walking up and doing that. And he was like walking hell slow. And he was, yeah, quite sketchy. Um, so I'm like, of course, I can't relax because... I have hit this guy walking around and usually I have a stun, like handheld stun gun kind of thing, but it's not a gun. I don't know the proper name, but it's a shocking device. It's pretty great. I usually feel comfortable with that. I used to have that with me when I saw, when I went to the Bay Area because there's a lot of crazy individuals that are on the BART or when I'm walking around. So I just feel safer with that. And I couldn't bring it because it's not allowed on the plane. So I am waiting for a new shipment of it to come soon. So until then, I have to just hope for the best. And one of my plans is to act crazier than him. So I thought about start. I was planning on doing that right back to him. But I was worried that that would start getting communication. And then I would have to start befriending him. Which I wouldn't mind if he really knew telekinesis. Perhaps he really was a superhero. I could be a sidekick. I always thought I'd make for a great sidekick. I wouldn't want to be the hero though because they have too much responsibility. Um, you got to do most of the fighting and whatnot. I'd rather just be the sidekick. They get some of the glory, but also a lot of the perks. But anyways, um, I see him do that. I say, "Hey, how are you? Hey, what's up?" You know, to let him know that I see him, his presence, because he keeps walking behind me too. And he said, "Good afternoon," and immediately after he said that, he went straight back to doing this and I was like oh my gosh so I did not want to deal with that I just thought okay because and he was happened to be friends with the scratcher scratcher guy and telekinesis guy were best friends I'm assuming because they came together to chill at the Guthrie Green on a beautiful Sunday afternoon slash evening whichever you think 4 p.m falls into 4 to 5 p.m so I was quite annoyed at this point and quite irritated and vexed because I just wanted to relax and enjoy my day and my dinner, but I rushed through because I had these individuals that kept, you know, messing around behind me and I just didn't know what was going on. And plus I had people keep coming up, uh, well a couple of guys come up, I don't have, didn't have cash, unfortunately no one really carries cash, but there's a couple of homeless guys that came up to you and asking for money. and. I offered him some of my burger. He didn't want it. The burger itself, blase. 
I did a whole food vlog about this area. Like, there's more about that, but I wouldn't recommend Cicero's. Maybe I'll try again something that's different. Not the burger, though, or the soup. It just, yeah, wasn't good. So it made the whole experience even worse. The food was, food was not good. Uh, the crazies around, it was bad. So I went back to my apartment because I was quite annoyed at this point. Uh, I had to pass over a few things and yeah, otherwise, that was about it. I came back, I put away my clothes because I got my hangers and all my clothes are extremely wrinkled. So I had to order an iron. I drank some tea. I think I tried to play some video games. Pretty positive I did. I played, or that might have been the night before. The night before I played video games, I played Street Fighter versus Tekken. I love Tekken. I grew up on Tekken. It's the best fighting game in my opinion. Street Fighter is fun to play in arcades, but you just button smash. It's, it's too chaotic. You don't know what's going on. And this video game is more like Street Fighter than it is Tekken where there's no strategy unless you're the minority individuals who actually know how to play. The minority of individuals, not just saying minority people, minority of individuals. I feel like the vast majority of individuals do not know how to play Street Fighter nor Mortal Kombat. Those are button smashing games. Tekken, there's a lot, at least some technique because it's not so chaotic. But this one's way too chaotic. It's not fun when it's just you just button smashing. You have no idea what's going on. So I, I quit that. I played some Red Dead Redemption for about five minutes. And that was it. That was my night. I tried to sleep, like I said, but it was just this Saturday night. There was a bar. There's people underneath me that uh, they pulled up on the Lime scooters. I don't know if they're called bikes or scooters. They're scooters, electric scooters. And one of them was a woman, and she was talking about her toes being frozen. She kept repeating that her toes were frozen because one of the men was trying to ride back on those lime scooters later on after the bar, and she said, my toes are frozen. I said, we don't have to do that then. And then one of the men wanted her to dip her toes into various flavorings, whether it be a Gatorade or one of those flavor enhancers, like a Mio, you know, this, or a Kool-Aid packet. Perhaps her toes would then become Otter Pops, you know, flavored, frozen, ice cold kind of things. Otter Pops are fire, if you know those, by the way. I used to love those as a kid. Back in the summer days, drink, they're just, it's just sugar on ice, sugar water with ice. I used to have that when we used to swim. But anyways, he wanted to, uh, suck her toes. I don't know if she, if they, they were together or he just met her at the bar. I'm not sure and I am assuming he had a foot fetish because why else would he want to stick frozen toes in his mouth and why would she allow him? It's quite odd. I used to have this, uh, I had a roommate that was actually obsessed with feet. He had a foot fetish and we used to make fun of him in the beginning when he, but he used to be insecure about it so we had to do it behind his back. And then we started, then he felt a little more confident about it. And finally he started making fun of himself, which we were glad because then we could actually call him out in person without him getting his feelings hurt. It's not a bad thing, own your fetishes. We all have some weird one. His just happened to be feet, but it's not that weird because that's pretty common. So anyways, he really liked feet. Um, I had this theory about, I don't have a foot fetish, but I have a theory about what may cause a foot fetish. I mean, there's various things, but one of my theories I thought about is if you remember the game as a child called Footsies, if you don't know what that is, it's when you sit underneath, where you're sitting down and you have a desk or whatnot, and you have somebody next to you that you like, and you hit their foot, like in a playful, teasing manner, in a flirtatious manner. Why I think this may lead to a foot fetish is because these are like your initial sexual feelings towards someone else. Right, because you're playing, in though you're a child, you really don't have these kind of feelings about sex or anything. They're still these feelings that you're attracted to somebody and you're associated them with feet touching. And so perhaps that may lead to a foot fetish because it's linked back to your original first feelings of sexual attraction. That's just my theory that I'm throwing out there. I am not a psychologist by any means. So if I am completely wrong, that is fine. Do not hold me to this theory. I'm just throwing it out there. If you want to explore it, 
go for it. I won't even require credit, but I would love credit if you want to. I'd appreciate it if you say, oh, by the way, Frank Andrews once threw this idea out. I went and ran with it as if it was a relay race. And turns out he was right. It could just be one theory. There's the, like everything is probably nuanced and also there's just sometimes uh, numerous reasons, multiple interpretations. Rarely if is something just one, like point A to point B sort of idea. That's so rare in life for this to be exactly leads to this, you know, this thing causes this. It's, it's hard to ever just have that. There's usually multiple reasons, especially because of psychology of any sorts, like people, right? It's like, oh yeah, uh, there's multiple reasons why you are, you have psychosis or why you have, why you're neurotic or have various neuroses, psychological disorders, etc. All these things are caused by a whole variety a plethora of reasons, not just one reason. It's rare if it's just one exact reason. But yeah, so I couldn't really sleep, and so I had to put headphones in and listen to the rain in order to try to ignore all the bar sounds. I am hoping that they will stop during the weekdays, but we will see. There are individuals who do love getting drunk even on weeknights. I do not really know whether to respect those people if they're living life right, living like Larry for any of those Spongebob fans, or if they are just making horrendous choices in life and choosing to even get plastered and go out on a bar and spend money on alcohol on a weeknight and do not have anything to wake up to. Or if they do wake up in the morning after a night of partying, that's more power to them, right? But anyways, yeah, so that was my night. I am just going to probably end this night by stretching, perhaps another re perhaps reading a little bit, going over my schedule for tomorrow and this week. And I am just excited for the week to start. I have to go to a co-working uh, space tomorrow for orientation. I get a free Tumblr. I'm pretty thrilled about that. And I do love free swag. They give out a swag bag and the tumbler is always nice, right? To keep a drink heated. Who doesn't love that? Tea and coffee. But yeah, anyways, thank you for listening. I really appreciate it. Uh, this is Frank Andrews. This is the OK Tulsa podcast. This is episode one. Feel free to link up with me on social media at OK Tulsa or on LinkedIn, Frank Andrews. I'm on all the places. I have zero friends at the moment, so please add me. If you like this podcast, share it. If you hate it, share it with people you hate. Perhaps you have an ex that you dislike, or some family member or a coworker you hate, or you have an arch enemy. Send them this podcast if you hate it, and say, listen to this, you bastard. Anyways, uh, goodbye. <laughs>